welcome to the sixth episode of Browsing My Games Library. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter E. The developer of this game is Handyman Studios, a two-man team that cut their teeth on this game as their first project, and it looks like there haven't been many games since. The publisher is Reverb Triple XP, who have released all of these games and don't have a web page, but they are just the indie label of a publisher that simply calls themselves Reverb. And here's their web page. According to the Fandom Wiki page, the engine is C-sharp. I'm going to assume what they meant is a custom engine that was built in C-sharp. The Kickstarter page for this game showed so much promise, and I will say the graphics are nifty, and the writing is funny. But that is about all I can say in support of it. Edge of Space is a Terraria-style gathering crafting game. In fact, the developers are friends with the team that made Terraria, and there are some bosses from Terraria who guest starred in Edge of Space, although I never got to them. The Terraria team may have been able to lend Handyman Studios some of their boss monsters, but they were unable to lend them their game-making know-how. I played this game for slightly longer than it took me to beat The Darkness 2, playing start to finish and seeing both the alternate endings. Now granted, I was playing on easy mode, but still, despite an equivalent time investment in this game, I have precious little to show for my efforts other than two supply lockers of dirt, mud, clay, and rocks. I feel less like an intrepid space cowboy on a wild frontier of terraforming an alien planet, and more like a landscaper who occasionally breaks his legs because he's misused his jetpack. The laser shark that I was supposed to be allowed to ride on only ever sent me on fetch quests as well as play the role of an FAQ document, and if he isn't enough I can also read through more tutorial docs that are in one of the many subscreens that I can pull up on the keyboard. But even with all of this, I still find myself frequently quitting the game and going out on the internet in search of answers to my questions like, how the hell does the power supply system work? It's possible this game could actually be fun with three buddies, all of you working together to get stuff done, but I'm not even sure of that. As a one-player game, it's painfully grindy, and as much as I feel like I'm wasting my time on very monotonous tasks, what bothers me the most is the feeling that I could easily be doing it for no reason. The XP bar will fill up all the way and flash a brief warning, but if you don't notice it and spend the XP immediately, everything you do from then on, which would usually fill up your XP bar, is wasted effort. More than once I've played an indie game lacking a certain amount of polish that will have an XP bar that continues to count up your points, even after you've bought every available upgrade. This is a relatively harmless red herring, subtly implying that there's more for you to get when there's really not. But here on the other end of the spectrum, rather than continuing to count points you don't need, they are failing to count the points that you do need, and I can't think of a single game design reason for it. It appears to be nothing more than a programming error that they couldn't be bothered to go back and fix. And where does one spend this XP? There is no direction as far as which branches of your tech tree you should explore first. The game is perfectly happy to let you unlock level 3 armor, only to inform you after the fact that one needs materials you've never encountered and won't come across until much later in the game in order to build it. Actually, it makes no comment as to when I may encounter these materials I've never heard of. I had to go on the internet to learn that I am FAR away from being able to actually build any of the new tech tree upgrades I just unlocked. This is just one of a dozen different ways that Edge of Space shows an appalling lack of craftsmanship. These sorts of failings would have been excusable when the game was supposed to come out in beta in 2012, or when it actually came out in 2015, and I would have been understanding if they were still working on the details a year after the release, but when I put my hard-earned money down for the special edition, I was promised there would be a flying squirrel with a space helmet, and judging by the official wiki it appears they reneged on that promise. At the time this review is being recorded in early 2019, I'm sorry to say, despite all the ample time they've had to fix it, this game is terrible. It's getting a haiku because it doesn't deserve anything longer than 17 syllables. Eight hours of grinding. I might as well have gone to work. Terraforming sucks. 
Once I've met YouTube's requirement of a thousand subscribers, I'm going to opt into the Google AdSense program and donate 95% of the proceeds directly to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. They have a stellar A rating on Charity Watch, and they fund a lot of excellent research. I love bioscience research. And I hate cancer.